It's so funny because when I begin to arrange things to begin filming, Ellie is up like, okay, we gotta, we gotta film. And it's like, well, you don't really have to do anything, Ellie, but I guess she just wants to be here for moral support. And then of course, Emily is always on her corner of the couch. You such a cute little cat loaf. Anyway, hello and welcome to, or back to, my channel. I'm Kit and here we talk about harmful beliefs and ideas promoted by certain influencers, content creators, and so on. And today, we're going to have a look at one of Fresh and Fit's videos. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know Fresh or Fit, and these are my thoughts and opinions on the content they put out for public consumption. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video, and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below, along with sources and resources, and now, on to the reason we're all here. I'm sure we're all aware of them by now, but Fresh, aka Walter, and Fit, aka Myron, are, per themselves, the number one men's self-improvement podcast in the world, and if you are a fan of theirs, I'm not quite sure what you're doing here, but you're probably not going to like this video. That being said, I was just having a casual stroll through YouTube, and I came upon this video, Fresh and Fit Challenge Tradcons to Debate. I thought it might tell me more about where this desire to debate Tradcons came from, and it did, but it also did so much more than that, and I came away with a few thoughts that I wanted to share. I'm just going to give a general warning here. These two are all over the place and it can be a lot. First, let's talk about consent. Last one I did was the Vince McMahon case because you're calling him a trafficker. Um, dude, dude, speaking of which, real fast, get this, right? Dude bought her, uh, I think he spent like 20 or 30,000 on a surgery for her, probably get her boobs done or something. Mm -hmm. um, he took her, uh, he gave her a BMW, 2022 BMW, right? Um, this is back when they were seeing each other back in 2022. Bloomingdale's gift cards, extravagant dinners, roses every other week, sending her a bunch of gifts, necklaces from a very fancy um, jeweler in Greenwich, Connecticut, all this shit. And then this woman comes in after the fact and says that he sexually assaulted her, graped her, and, um, and trafficked her. This woman willingly accepted gifts from 2019 all the way up until to 2022. And she's mad now and wanted to file a lawsuit at an opportune time, I may add, because she got rejected. Granted, what happened to her? No more gifts. So all of a sudden, you know what? No, no, for my feelings alone, I feel like this is bad. But before it was okay. Hey, you know what? I'm having fun with the guys. It's multiple guys. Let me do this. It's fun. It's exciting. Yep. It's different. And then all of a sudden, money stops. Hold on. This is bad now. Yeah. Pay up, nigga. Yeah. That's that's what it is, bro. And the, and the thing is, this is why, like, um, this is a problem. Like, <clears throat> We live in a world where even if it's consensual, the girl has reserves the right to withdraw the consent at any time <clears throat> and then claim some bullshit about, I was trafficked, I was uh, graped. No, it was consensual sex. You traveled with Mr. McMahon all around the country because you liked it. He got you tickets to WWE and you were living in, you were going private jets, hanging out, woo, jet flying, limousine riding, all that shit. That was great. Now you want to come back retroactively and say it was great because you're not getting paid no more. And that's the danger that we're in in this society, guys. I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you give someone gifts, they don't owe you sex. And yes, consent can be withdrawn at any time. Consent at the beginning doesn't mean consent throughout, nor does it mean consent to everything. That does not mean you'll be accused of rape if a woman wants to stop. It just means you have to stop when she says to. And that goes the other way around as well. And it's really gross how they try to dismiss this by saying, oh, well, she stopped getting paid, so now it's sexual assault. No, they aren't privy to the details of this case. They're just talking out of their ass. And their audience eats it up because they've primed their audience to see men as the victims of women. Following this horrific opening, Myron tells us how dating works now, which is that men are expected to always be men, but women pick and choose when to be a lady. And at no point does he tell us what being a lady means. I suppose because the majority of his audience are men, but he does have some advice for the men. Don't sit there and deal with a chick that isn't gonna be a lady all the time if you're being a man all the time. That's fucking bullshit. We don't do that over here. We don't negotiate with terrorists. And people call me a misogynist or an asshole for that, but I'm looking at it like that is the real time solution to dealing with the contemporary dating problem of women picking and choosing when they wanna be a lady. Well, he just called women terrorists, apparently for the crime of picking and choosing when to be a lady, whatever that means, but he's totally not a misogynist. 
Next, let's look at Justin Waller's interaction with Lila Rose. I'm not quite sure who Justin is, but apparently Myron looks to him like a big brother. And Lila Rose is the founder of Live Action, an anti-abortion organization. They both appeared on the same episode of the Whatever podcast, and Lila wanted to know why Justin wouldn't exert the self-control he uses in other aspects of his life to settle down with his wife. I guess he has multiple girlfriends. And Myron... Well, he took that as some sort of attack on men having preferences and standards. Guess what? I got standards too. I want the most women. And you should fucking be able to do that shit as a man because you have to bust your ass and life is way harder for men than it is for women. But they expect you to sit there, right, and conceal your wants and needs, but they'll never conceal their wants and needs. I'm not entirely sure how quantity ties into standards and preferences, but okay. Myron is saying that he wants a lot of women and he deserves a lot of women because he busts his ass. But I have to ask, why? If you think women are the worst, why would you want even one, let alone multiple? And why is he so angry? Think about that for a second, guys. They want you to sit there and be the better man, be the bigger man. You go ahead and you settle for just one chick when you had to bust your ass just to get that one fucking chick. But she would have never settled on you if you had not been the fucking guy that you are. That's the fucking crazy double standard that they try to sit there and put you and try to shame you with. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. I'm here to tell you guys right fucking now. If you bust your ass and you go to the gym and you make money and you do all this fucking shit and you fucking get it through the mud like most of you guys have to fucking do, right? And then a woman has the fucking gall, the audacity to try to tell you, reel it in, you know, just have one girl. Yeah, fuck out of here. Because bitch, you wouldn't have picked me if I did not bust my ass to become the man that I am right now. Okay? I'm here to tell you guys, be the fucking man and enjoy the spoils of war. Enjoy what the fuck you built up and be able to enjoy the benefits that you built up. Don't ever let no fucking bitch that didn't fucking work and go through the fucking ringer to get what she got tell you how to deal with what you fucking earned because they didn't earn shit. That's the reality that females don't want to fucking tell you. They're giving their value up front. You must earn your value down the road. So don't let someone who gets their value up front tell you how to dictate your fucking value. Fuck out of here, man. <laughs> Very rational, very logical. Anyway, let's remember that women are given their value up front, by which he means fertility, even though that's not true, and men have to earn it. And since men have to earn value, they deserve as many women as they want. Guess what? Women are fucking lazy, all right? They're fucking lazy most of the time. This is why they're not in hard labor work. This is why they prefer to stay at home with the kids. This is why they don't work as hard as men in general. They don't put in the same amount of hours, etc. They're fucking lazy in general. So the thing is, the reason why women want to get married so much is because they want to be able to sit there and not put in the fucking work to attract you anymore. Guess what? You got to keep that bitch on her toes. And you keep her on her toes by staying attractive and being able to replace her at any fucking time. But people call him a misogynist for no reason. There are lazy women, just as there are lazy men, but this idea that women just want to stay home with the kids and do nothing, childcare is work. Housework is work. Has it occurred to Myron that women work fewer hours in paid employment because of childcare and other unpaid obligations? It's not as though women are just slacking off and having a good time. And there are reasons there are fewer women in hard labor jobs and laziness is not one of those reasons. But let's know. Myron thinks women are lazy, so men have to keep them on their toes. Doesn't that just make more work for the man? Also, if the man is working and going to the gym and, I guess, going out to make sure he has women he can replace the wife with, who's at home taking care of the house and kids? The lazy wife? Understand, guys, that every single, single intersexual dynamic relationship between a man and a woman is always a game of chess. It's always a battle between the two to maintain leverage because one party must, must like the other party more than they like them. That's how every single fucking relationship works. Your job as the man is to make sure that she always likes you more than you like her, not the other way around. Hmm. One more time, maybe phrase it differently. Dating and intersexual dynamics is adversarial in nature. It's the men versus the women, and the guy's job is to go ahead and get the sex, while the woman's job is to go ahead and withhold the sex and try to get as much resources as they can from you. Yeah. Okay? Okay, so relationships are war. Got it. But women are going to try to chip away at your fucking armor all the time and try to say, oh, 
If you're a real man, you wouldn't have other women. If you're a real man, you would do X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Why? Because she gets the advantage when she does that. If she eliminates your other options of other females, she knows that she has no fucking leverage. And women don't have leverage. Guess what they have to do? They have to work for your attention. They have to work for your validation. They have to work to be with you. And most women don't want to do that. That's why they want walk down in that fucking white dress, get married, and then be able to collect anytime they divorce you because they know that they don't have to maintain themselves. Why do so many fucking bitches become fat after they get married? Because they know that you ain't going nowhere. One once a woman gets comfortable and knows you ain't going nowhere, that's when disrespect comes. That's when the uh, talking shit comes. That's where even the, so, where some of the domestic violence might come. And I've showed a study on that, that women are actually larger perpetrators of domestic violence than men are. Yeah, I fucking said it. It's the truth. Women absolutely start more domestic violence than any time that there's domestic violence and there's only one way. Women are always more likely the perpetrators than the men. But the reality is society will never fucking tell you that. They'll always say that the men are the perpetrators, the men are the bad guys, the men are the assholes, the men are the pigs, the men are the dogs. No, it's the females that are the perpetrators anytime there's one-way domestic violence. And if you don't believe me, there's a reason why fucking lesbians have the highest levels of domestic violence out of any relationship. Uh-oh. I am very curious about his source for the assertions that one-way domestic violence is always more likely to be perpetrated by women and that lesbian relationships have more domestic violence. But let's say that Myron was right. Women are the worst and they're violent as well. Why would he be trying to teach men how to get with women? Why would he stress the importance of having a backup woman? Wouldn't it be better to be single and minimize your dealings with women? But let's just remember that women are violent. But they don't want you to know this shit in mainstream media, do they? Nope. Okay, guys, this is this is what I'm talking about when I say the repo. This is just about having the, uh, the, the, um, the knowledge of how female nature works and everything else like that. It's about knowing how the world really fucking works. The shit that they don't want you to know. They don't want you guys to know this type of shit. They don't want you to realize your own value. And they're always going to try to shame you because a man that knows his value is the most dangerous thing on fucking earth. Because women can't manipulate you. Other people can't manipulate you. And a man that stands on his own two fucking feet, on his own ten toes, no one can stop him. That's why they always go after the fighting age males first. That's why they know if they want to destroy society, they go after the men first. They don't go after the women, man. Nobody gives a fuck what they're going to do. They can't fight to defend themselves anyway. It's the men, guys. So per Myron, women are violent, but women also can't fight to defend themselves. Okay, Myron decides to take us on a history lesson to explain how we got here. And of course, he tackles feminism. So 1930s, first wave feminism. Women are going ahead and getting rights, voting rights, the ability to have property, etc. right? Someone should ask Myron what amendment gave women the right to vote and when it was ratified. Anyway, let's talk about music. This stuff, this type of music, it indoctrinates women, man. We know that women are followers. We know that they're, that they're hive-minded. We know that they want to go ahead and follow what's cool and follow the trends, etc. I believe he was talking about Cardi B, but again... Myron isn't a misogynist. He just thinks women have a hive mind and are followers. Anyway, let's get into some stats. You got the family courts where women are initiating 80% of the divorces, 90% of alimony is paid for men to women. Women win almost all the child custody battles, okay? And people might sit there, well, Myron, the men don't fight for the kids. The reason why they don't fight for the fucking kids is because their lawyers tell them not to waste their fucking money and time because they're going to lose. I do love some fact checking. 10% of divorce cases involve alimony and of that 10%, women are 7% of the recipients. As for child custody, roughly 91% of cases are decided outside of court. And if someone's lawyer tells them not to bother fighting for their kids, they should fire that lawyer. That might be good advice if someone is an addict or something, but all things being general, men shouldn't be discouraged from seeking custody. Funnily enough, I did read an article about not thinking of child custody as something to win, but considering Myron believes heterosexual relationships are acrimonious in general, I suppose none of this should come as a surprise. And we've seen the biggest wealth transfer between men and women in today's world, which is divorce. Jeff Bezos' wife, other billionaires as well. Jeff Bezos' wife? You mean Mackenzie Scott, an author and one of the first Amazon employees? And why did they divorce? Could it be because Jeff was cheating on his wife and despite what these two say, women actually aren't all that keen to share a high value man. I'm not too familiar with billionaires, but Bill Gates comes to mind. And hmm, Melinda Gates, former Microsoft employee and current philanthropist. And why did they divorce? Could it have been because of his dealings with Jeffrey Epstein? Nah, we all know women aren't rational and bring nothing to the world. Clearly, Mackenzie and Melinda just use these men for their money and divorce them just to get more of it. Jeff and Bill are the real victims here. Anyway, let's hear more about how awful women are. 
th- there was um a, a TikTok that I was commenting on where a girl said that she was seeing five guys at the same time and like the one that she was smashing didn't have a job, blah blah. blah. Yeah. And she said each guy has a different role. <laughs> I'm, I applaud her for that because that's how most women date nowadays. Bro, every girl's talking to five to ten dudes and each guy pr- provides a different utility. No, that's not how most women date nowadays. And no serious person would see a TikTok and think, oh yes, this person represents all women. But Walter is here with his own anecdote. So you know what's funny? That's just how it is. I go on dates, right? Yeah. I look up. I just happen to glance at the girl's phone, and I'll see like her texting a dude sometimes randomly, or for example, I'm out with some friends and I see a girl texting. I'm like, okay. Imagine she's texting somebody that she's dating, right? But she's out here in a club, or for example, this environment, uh, or even on a date, talking to a guy. So they they also have options that they are talking to. So. You better be the best one for her at that moment. It apparently never occurs to these two that women could be texting a friend or a family member. Women's worlds revolve around men. If they're not having sex with a man, they're talking to a man or thinking about a man. Women's lives are just filled with men and not in a platonic way. And I wouldn't have thought it possible, but somehow they get worse. Because let me tell you guys something, dirty little secret about females that they don't fucking ever admit. By the time a girl hits puberty, she's already dealing with men, figuring out how to deflect them, figuring out which guys are losers, which guys aren't. She's figuring out how to finesse, how to maneuver, etc. How the hell is having to deal with creepy men at puberty a dirty little secret about women? Why is he not shaming men for hitting on children? Dealing with men at puberty is not a benefit. It's not good training. It is terrifying and something no girl is ready for. And how they manage to twist men being disgusting into girls have been training since puberty how to finesse men is reprehensible. Not that it's a surprise given their rhetoric about women, but I somehow didn't think they would go that low. I promise you're not missing much by not seeing the video in full, but they did talk a lot about religion and someone sent in a $20 tip to say, A Christian man has to share his wife's affection, loyalty, and submission with another man called Jesus. She worships Christ 24-7 and threatens, If you don't submit to Christ, I won't submit to you. Christianity is gynocentrism masked as patriarchy. That might be the strangest take on Christianity I've ever seen. And this person obviously has no experience with the Christians that preach submission. That's not how it works. So I didn't think this needed to be said, but as I've edited this video, I've changed my mind. Women aren't objects that you're owed or that you win because you think you've worked hard enough, however you define work, to deserve one or 20. Women are people just like men. They have their own thoughts, feelings, emotions, internal lives. And if you don't understand that, you need to be working through that with a therapist, not trying to date. I have so much more to say. Like, I don't understand how the ways Myron describes women doesn't give his viewers whiplash, but they will keep until another video. In the meantime, back to the current one. Okay, so I really can never go into a fresh and fit video expecting something straightforward or expecting Myron not to yell. And the whole reason I watched was just to understand why they challenged trad cons to a debate. And basically Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh pushed them too far. And honestly, they don't even disagree with trad cons. Myron and Walter just think that the world has changed too much and Ben and his ilk are too out of touch to understand how women are these days. At some point, Myron said, girls aren't the same as in the 1940s. 40s, 50s, 60s, and dude, not one person in these videos was alive, let alone dating in the 40s, 50s, or 60s. And Matt and Ben are both in their 30s. Same as Myron, same as me. Real quick, I also want to address Myron's assertion that, in short, sexuality hurts women, but not men. I don't know where he got that from, but my guess is the IFS study. But he forgets a few key things. To hear Myron tell it, a woman having sex ruins her for marriage. But per the study, yes, women with no or one sexual partner are the least likely to divorce. But women with three to nine sexual partners are less likely to divorce than a woman with two, and women with 10 or more sexual partners have the highest likelihood of divorce. But They just leave it there like they think a penis has some magical ability to damage a woman's capacity for love and commitment. I'm sorry to be crass, but it's not the dick, Myron. I know he thinks women who sleep around are irreparably damaged, which is a whole other thing. Like, why would you sleep with someone you think is damaged? Wouldn't that put you at risk, especially if you believe women are inherently harmful to men? If you think sex is harming someone, why would you want to contribute to the harm? But he also writes these women off as sluts and says they were already damaged, so... 
All that aside, Myron forgets that people who have fewer partners have a higher likelihood of religiosity, which tends to frown on divorce, and it's quite possible people with more partners aren't as interested in long-term commitments and aren't as likely to be religious. And it's all moot anyway, as the median number of sexual partners a woman has in her lifetime is 4.2. But let's not let facts get in the way of the grift. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.